thinking about it. So if I'm someone thinking about hosting and, you know, obviously in these, uh, you know, economic times, I think everyone is looking to make a little extra money. Um, you know, how much money do you think I can make renting out my space? Yeah, it, it completely depends on the type of user you want to be. I'd say the mm -hmm. average, uh, the average user who's just passively kind of finding a, a little, little space in their home that's unused is yeah. going to make 2000, two uh, maybe more dollars per year. Okay. Uh, but we we have users that make twenty thousand dollars a year mm. on the platform. So, uh, and, and those tend to be the the more active hosts where yeah. they're listing multiple spaces uh, around their home. Yeah. And oftentimes you do have those spaces that you just don't you just don't realize you do. We will send out as part of our service. You'll see when you sign up as a host, we offer free photography services, mm. and we'll send out a photographer. Um, free of charge and oftentimes when the, that photographer goes to visit this space they will point out other spaces hmm. that uh, that potential host can rent and the host is like oh I didn't even think about that space that that could be monetized and instead of listing you know one uh, just kind of nook or cranny they'll end up listing two or three spaces and and do the income just starts to build yeah, that's interesting. So when you're talking about spaces, I mean, I guess I'm thinking about bedrooms, but are we talking also, you know, are we talking like one corner of the house or, you know, under, you know, a linen closet or how, how small, <laughs> I guess, can we get here? <laughs> a safety, you know, maybe yeah. even a safety deposit no. type, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, a lockbox or something like that uh, that you might have in your house? We, we certainly have um, spaces as small as a closet go up and, and that can be very convenient for a certain type of user. If you think of like a student who is going on an internship for a summer mm. and needs to store their items somewhere, a closet is really all they need. Yeah. You know, they have four boxes that they can put in a closet. And then we have spaces as big as, um, oftentimes people have land next to their home. Mm. Uh, they'll have like an empty lot and they'll list that lot and we'll put, you know, yeah. an RV and a boat on that lot and they can really start to make income mm. off of that. And there's really no platform out there today to monetize that but neighbor. Yeah, and that's interesting because you know I think in the in the gig economy, as I sort of know firsthand, you know, there's a lot of variability, and it was a li it's a little bit of an unfair question to ask. You know, how much money can you make, right? Because there's so many different options, but it's something someone people always ask me about Uber and Lyft drivers, and I think that there's less, you know, in the gig economy, like from a worker's perspective, if you're driving for Uber and Lyft or delivering food, you know, I think that there's less uh, variability because you know you're still sort of doing the same job at the end of the day. But I do tell sure. people, you know, frankly, like we've seen, you know drivers with more experience make five dollars per more per hour right um those that kind of know what they're doing can make more money those that are like signing up for the best services the you know the quickest and getting the best bonuses and you know staying on top of all that can and i think that's one of the the cool things about the gig economy and with a service like yours is that you know, the average person might be making $2,000 a month, but, or $2,000 a year, sorry. Um, but if you have, you know, some extra space or if you're willing to get creative or if you kind of understand, you know, the needs of the users in this community, you can do, you know, much better. So I'm curious to know what kind of dictates the higher earnings. Is it the, you know, like, what are the two or three main things that maybe dictate higher earnings for hosts? Is it the city that they live in? Is it the type of space they're renting out or, you know, physically, you know, the more, you you know, like a big piece of land. If you have more space to rent out, do you get more money for that? Yeah, and you'll see when you sign up, uh, our, most most hosts have no idea how to price their their mm. space. And so as you put in your city, as you put in uh, the size of your space, as you put in the features, like does it have uh, security cameras? Mm -hmm. Does it have smoke detectors? Oh, interesting. Does it have a separate locked entrance? Um, the algorithm will suggest a recommended price that you can follow or, or not follow, it's it's basically up to you. But but that price basically gives you a 90% great, greater likelihood of mm -hmm. getting rented. Got um, you know, we've, we've watched what gets rented in that city. So yeah, you're right, it, it absolutely depends on the city. Um, but of course, uh, you know, it, it's gonna track pretty closely to, uh, you know, income levels as well, right? So you know, if you're in a city like San Francisco, income levels are going to be higher, but you're going to make mm -hmm. more on neighbor. Uh, if it. you're in a more suburban market like Utah, um, you're going to make less on neighbor, but, but it's going to be about okay. the same share of your income. 
Got it. So sort of the number one determinant, I guess, you know, across the board is kind of the city that you're operating in. And obviously, you know, most That's people right. probably aren't going to move, you know, across the country to, um, you know, maybe, you know, San Francisco to, you know, start their neighbor. Although, you know, we have heard of drivers, you know, moving from like Florida to San Francisco. So you never know um, to drive depending on, you know, people's situations. Are there any other kind of big factors that affect how much so a host might earn? Yeah, the, the other factors are, um, well, there's kind of the the basic factors and and those are again the location mm -hmm. and the size right okay. if you think about any real estate market it's it. it's location 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 and then and then the number of the amount of square feet you have to offer but when you get into like who does well on our platform mm -hmm. um, the the major things that matter are you know nice photos those spaces get rented the fastest and they stay rented the longest uh, because the the renter is able to envision the space mm -hmm. they're getting into there you know we we had a, we had a question when we got into this whether renters mm -hmm. were going to value those photos because it's less of an experience yeah. like an airbnb they're not and staying it's more there they're just a, putting their junk there right <laughs> they're just putting their stuff there exactly but they do it's it's one mm -hmm. of the most statistically significant factors on our site um, in fact you're you're more than twice as likely to be rented if you have four photos or more on our site mm -hmm. um that's that's one of the things that that we share with all of our hosts just just creating that visual experience because these items that people are storing are items that they value mm -hmm. right like they they could anything that you know you would classify as as you know quote unquote junk most renters are just going to throw that away yeah. right they they are storing, they are paying That's to store point. these items <laughs> because they want, you know, because they value them yeah. and they want to keep them. And so being able to visualize that space and see that it's a nice space that, that's taken care of. And, and a lot of times these are high dollar items, right? Mm -hmm. We store, um, you know, one of the more common items stored on our platform is like classic cars, right? Oh, we, wow. we get, you know, 69, uh, Camaros and Corvettes mm -hmm. and you know all these classic cars or boats, right? These are boats that people pay you know fifty thousand dollars each, fifty thousand dollars to purchase, and then they're storing um, on the on the platform. So, so that's I think the single biggest determining factor. And then the responsiveness. Oftentimes, renters will come on and they'll look at your space, yeah. and then they'll look at a couple more spaces close to you. Um, and it's those hosts that are kind of engaged in the platform and are very responsive mm -hmm. and answer questions quickly that the renters decide to go with because they feel comfortable, you know, transacting with that, that yeah. person. Yeah, it makes sense. And I mean, you talked about sort of the value of the items that people are storing. And I think you brought up a, a good point. You know, I probably as the host look at it as junk, but <laughs> the uh, person, you know, that's renting this space for me, I mean, that's really like you said, that's the reason why they're renting this space because they value it. Maybe it has sentimental value or, you know, some perceived value, uh, you know, monetarily or whatever it is. I didn't notice on your.